what's up pretty gang welcome back to my channel it's your favorite nail tech peaches and you guys can already tell what we're working on today we are back with another acrylic toes video you guys ask for them all the time it doesn't ever occur to me that i really do one only every like couple of months not on purpose it's just i'll be so busy um that sometimes it's it's much harder to record feet if you get what i'm saying okay so today we are doing a milky white set you guys here is a before and after she already had a pretty good base to work with, but you know what I always say, white acrylic is tricky and that doesn't change just because it's on toes, okay? So before we go ahead and get into it, let's get into our subscriber shout out, which goes to Gianni Wright, subscribed since October 11th, one of my clients, shout out to you boo, y'all already know, click the notifications on because, listen, if your notifications is off, how the hell you gonna know what I'm on, okay? Subscribe, all that good stuff. So her feet look dusty and crusty because I filed off that white polish and you can see Honestly, I don't want to say nobody has like ideal feet or ideal anything But kind of sort of because you can see all her toenails are already similar uh, Width to shape her toenails and her toes are pretty like evenly Looking you know like she's got pretty appealing feet as it is okay so it's going to be much easier to go ahead and do her feet at this point i've done so many types of feet i don't even want to say one type is easier than others but if you're a beginner these types of nail beds um because there's a lot of space they're not too small they're not you know what i'm saying it's gonna be much easier for you to do okay so after we do the prep with the cuticle pusher pushing back the cuticle area we're gonna go ahead and we're going to use a good old sanding band. You guys know I like zebra sanding bands. Medium grit, which is around, I want to say like 200 or so, uh, if you want to be technical. And um, we're going to go ahead and buff the shine. Now, I'm not doing too, too much because, again, I did already use a zebra file. I use a 100, 180, and I went ahead and removed the polish that she had on. So I do not want to over file her nails, okay? Now, I do... On toes, I'm not going to lie, I do be using a little bit higher of a speed than I do on fingernails. And it's really just, uh, toenails is kind of built a little differently. Like sometimes the cuticle skin and the, just all that stuff, you need a little bit more elbow grease sometimes. So I went ahead and did that. And then I'm going to take this towel and I'm going to really get all the dust, as much dust as I can, out of the nail area. I don't like to spray anything or nothing like that just because... I don't want to affect the prep I just did. That little dust, it's it's not going to be a big deal, I promise. Like, don't leave it overly dusty, of course, but you see, when I prep and prime, it's going to look way less ashy, way less dusty, and it's going to be okay, all right? So I pretty much am prepping the same exact way I would for a full set. Just no tips. You guys already know on my channel, I do not use tips in any way, shape, or form on toes, okay? So, two coats of Young Nails Protein Bond, because that's what Young Nails says to do. And after this, we are ready to put acrylic on. Now, obviously, you can see by how long this video is, I always keep toes in real time. Um, I just feel like you guys probably like to see it better that way. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So, you guys know when I do Milky White sets, it's going to be Young Nails Core White. I feel like their white is like one of the perfectest whites like the formula is not too runny it's still very you know milky looking a little translucent but not too much definitely not coke white okay so i kind of have a little bit of a not a new method it's the same method except for i take larger beads now because i realize when i use a larger bead i have more to work with like and i don't have to extend the toenail as much now with white, I do not use as large of beads as I normally would, okay? So the next acrylic toe set, if it's not white, I will show you guys what I mean by I use larger beads. This bead, you can see it's like not too dry. I don't want it to be stiff, but it's also not so wet that it's running away from me all over the place. I have perfect control, right? But you can see underneath how it's kind of like not spilling, but there's a little spillage underneath, okay? That is because the formula of white it takes a little bit longer to dry so like if this was nude or something it probably would have stiffened up a little more to where I'm not correcting the underneath as much but because it is white you do have to be aware of that okay the other thing you need to be aware of is with this method if you extend it too much and you can see through the nail you see how I'm 
pushing back the acrylic like that it's because if you extend it too much too soon okay with the white what's gonna happen is it's gonna break so you can see through what I'm doing because I'm keeping most of the product at the tip so that way I can continue to to build the nail all right so I am trying to get it as nice as possible now so that way when I go ahead and I do my shaping and stuff later on it's not gonna cause me no problems no issues right we need to make sure that the acrylic is tucked into the entire um, area around the cuticles okay same as nails because the thing is if you do not do that you're gonna have areas of their real nails peeking through and that's not gonna be cute okay so you can see I'm adding another bead and like I said, I know there's like dust and stuff in there. As I go, I am going to try and, you know, get some of it out. But what's going to happen is like those areas are going to basically get filed down when I'm filing the cuticle area. So right now they're not going to get in the way and they're going to be on. Okay. So this next bead, normally I would have used a bead large enough just to like get all the way into the cuticle. But white takes longer to dry a little bit. Okay. So I do not want to risk having any flooding because I just don't want to deal with it. Okay, do you see how I'm going sidewall from sidewall and over that area that was like pretty opaque and see through and translucent? I am pulling the white. See how I'm not swiping? I am patting and pulling the white because I want to keep the opacity. I want to make sure that it's not too see through. Well, uh oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. And I'm taking one more bead, a smaller one. Okay. I'm working smaller with smaller beads than I normally do when, I, when I'm doing toes, but I need to make sure that I'm not going to flood anything and that I can get as close as possible with the most opacity as possible, okay? The thing about working with white in and doing toes is because I am using it to actually build out the nail, sometimes you will have areas that is very milky looking and very, um, you know, like very translucent and that's not what we want because with milky white you want it's okay to see a little bit of the color through the um the white a little bit of you know the natural nail color but we do not want to be seeing whole areas of like where the where you can see where the tip is at we don't want that okay i don't want to see no yellowing no pink none of that so i'm going in with even smaller beads and i'm making sure you see how close i'm getting up to that um epinicium okay in that cuticle area, you guys, the epinicium is the skin actually around what y'all refer to as the cuticle, all right? But I'm taking smaller bits to make sure that it is nice and even, not only in like the opacity of the actual color, building up the color, but when I go and file, if it's not evenly the same like built upness, okay, we don't want to, they're not going to be thick, okay? But if it's not built up the same around the whole cuticle, you, it's going to give lumps and bumps. And lumps and bumps is for who? It's for chumps, okay? So I went ahead and extended the toenail a little bit. This is how I extend it. Like, and basically what I mean by this is I'm adding a little extra length because I know when I file, it's gonna get shorter. So a real big tip, this don't matter the color or anything. Make the toenail a little bit longer than what you want it to be because when you go and file, it's gonna get shorter, okay? And there's gonna be a good amount of filing involved even if it's already a perfect square because what's going to happen is number one you need to get your corners right and tight okay and to do that you need to make sure that everything is filed a certain way and nice and perfectly so that's why right here you see me building the square into a square because if not it's going to affect the way i go ahead and file and it's not going to give the appearance of like really nice corners and really square so you're going to see me go ahead and make sure everything is following the guidelines of her nail bed you see how none of the acrylic is spilling out on the sides there's no flooding no anything it, it doesn't have the tip and stuff don't have to be perfect but you do need to make sure those squares is i mean those corners like see how this you need to make sure the corners is very nice and even and it's giving 90 degree angle already okay that's the big tip make the nail once again make the nail a little bit longer than what you would like it to be and I know it can be hard to see like, oh, what's too long, what's too short because of the angle, but that comes with practice and with time, okay? And it goes for each person's lifestyle and they foot shape, all of that, okay? So the big toe is what takes the longest. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, this one I was taking even longer because I'm using white, so I'm being careful, okay? So for the small toes, I can generally get those done in about one or two beads. Now this, I like to get the small toes done quick 
And by the time you're at the pinky toe, the big toe will be dry or it should be. And if it's not, that means you're working too wet or the, the whatever products you're using is taking too long to dry because I can do toes in about an hour and 15 minutes if I'm not doing French or nothing, right? And that's all based upon, a, I know how my products dry, okay? So we're gonna make sure again, tuck them cuticles in. You guys, you see how up close and personal I'm getting? You do not want to see areas of a real nail peeking through. It's not gonna give what you want it to get, okay? And you see how you can kind of see through the nail a little bit, you saw a little bit of yellowing because her tips, um, where her tips is at, they are a little yellow and that's normal, that's natural. Okay, we don't need any comments about that. But whatever I pull down off of the tip, see how I extended it a little bit? Okay, because we want them to be longer than what they're gonna end up being. And any little areas where I feel like, oh, that's too much naturalness showing through, natural color, um, showing through, then um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of acrylic and I'm just gonna swipe it there, okay? So here we go, the next toe. Now, mind you, every toe is not going to be, okay, how should I put it, right? Here's another tip. You cannot change the trajectory and the angle at which the toenail grows, okay? So just make sure that you're following the guidelines of the toenail, and you can see I'm pushing it in there, pushing it in there, following the guidelines that I can, right? I'm using the other toes to stabilize myself. Number one, because at the angle, like her, she wasn't holding her foot completely fat, flat, which is fine because I can work with a lot of different people. People, Some people have to hold their feet differently due to all different types of things. And you just got to go with it. I'll be honest with you. You just got to go with it. So I'm basically using her other toes to stabilize myself. So that way, number one, I can stay within the camera frame. And number two, I can do what I need to do. Okay? Because you have to learn how to hold different types of toes. You have to learn all different types of positions. It's crazy, okay? There's so much that goes into doing toes. People think it's just like, oh, it's just so easy, da da da. It's easy now because I've been doing it for a couple years, but like at first it was intimidating, okay? So make sure you tuck everything in, right? So you can see the toe next to it, uh, going back on what I was talking about, okay? The toe next to it, the ring finger toe, you can see that one grows a little bit at an angle. And I'm not gonna try and go against it and try and form the nail to, to like, oh, you know, go opposite so that way it doesn't look like it's, just just go with it because they're meant to be natural. And at the end of the day, as the toenail grows in, if you do try and like, oh, let me try and make this look straight or, oh, that toe, that toe is naturally crooked, let me try. It's gonna look stupid when it grows in, okay? So please keep that in mind people's feet and toenails and everything comes in so many different shapes and sizes there is no need to try and uh correct things that you know toenails that grow crooked and things like that because as it grows in it's not going to grow in um it's not going to grow in straight so now you have a nail that still is going to look crooked okay so here we go placing another bead make see how it I think on this one, I do get a little bit of flooding. I think, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm trying to wait for it. But do you see how I'm putting just enough product so that way I have enough to extend it a little bit and create a square, but also to get into that cuticle area, okay? You don't need a lot of acrylic. We want these to be as natural looking as possible. Of course, it's gonna look like a you know acrylic toes, but at the end of the day, we want them to be nice and flush. We do. You do not need much of an apex, y'all. You really don't. It's really not like that serious, okay? And then for the pinky, I'm sorry, it's gonna be a little bit hard to see because it's right there on the end, but hopefully you guys can kind of peer over my hand and see, okay? But when you're working with white acrylic, you just really need to really need to know your, um, what do they call that you need to know your ratios liquid to powder ratios i really suggest using young nails uh, core clear because to some this might look coke white to others it's going to give milky white so this when people ask for white this is the white that i give i don't do no other white besides this i don't give people a choice of white because using coke white i have learned i stopped doing that because it looks 
it's absolutely very very runny like i'm not gonna lie white is one of them colors and so far um young nails core white is the least runny white that i have used in my entire nail career okay so you can take a look you can see okay everything is nice and on there right so now how i always start out oops like i said um basically by the time you're at the pinky the big toe is dry and i file the big toe by itself and take care of things because then the other toes are going to be dry when i get to them that's another big tip that i could give you because if things are not dry you cannot proceed and that will make it take even longer all right acrylic toes is a very quick service people don't have time to be sitting there all day for two three hours the same as a full set okay in my opinion so I go ahead, I square it off to make sure everything's cool. And then the next thing I do is I go ahead, I take my e-file. I do turn it up a little bit because otherwise this will take all day and you won't have enough speed to get a nice like rotation. I go underneath and I thin out the tip, okay? And I smooth out the top. You can see, it's not a thick big toe. You can see, okay? I'm going in there and I am going ahead and sealing off the cuticles, okay? Now I'm looking underneath to make sure because I did extend it and because this is an overlay and not tips, there's going to be acrylic that is possibly like, I don't want to say stuck to the skin, but it's going to, it could possibly look a little thick under there. So that's what I'm doing right now. You see, I'm going to the sides. I'm making sure that no matter what angle you look at, it's not going to look like, oh, this, this acrylic, you know, like, oh, I made this toenail. I want it to look as natural as possible. And this is part of that process. Now be careful because you don't want to cut anybody because you absolutely can. This is why typically I use a zebra file 180, uh, 100, 180 because one side will definitely get it done, but also it's not as sharp as a black file. The only times I use a black file is if somebody, I just did a full set on somebody and then I'm doing their toes because the file is doled out by then. So it won't be as sharp but it definitely does a little bit of a better job like a quicker a quicker job okay so i'm going back and forth between squaring off the tip and every time i square off the tip i am going underneath my e-file because it exposes more thickness you see so as you shorten the nail and file it down you see under there i'm making sure that the thickness it's hard to see you guys but I'm making sure that the tip is not thick and I'm making sure it underneath does not look bulky. Okay? Because underneath it will look like a, a mound of acrylic under there because of how I, I dragged the acrylic down. I patted it down. And I'm making sure those cuticles are nice and flush. And I'm making sure everything is nice and squared off. Okay? So, you can see this particular length of big toenail, that's a nice standard length. Okay, the only time it's really too much longer than that is if someone already has toenails that are a little bit longer than that and I'm, I need to extend it more to accommodate for the filing or if they're coming back for a fill, okay? So like I said, now the next two toenails are gonna be dry for a fact. That's something I know for a Fendi fact, okay? I do the same thing and you have to know how to hold the toenails, okay? So you see how I'm maneuvering the toenails, I'm going ahead. Like I said, the file is on a little bit higher than what I do for, for fingernails, just because for toenails, this process of going ahead and thinning off the tip, it requires a little bit more speed. So you have to be careful with this because you can't cut somebody. But do you see how I'm, I'm holding the skin back? And I do file the sides. I don't know how many people do this, but it just adds that little something, something, that extra, okay? I pull down the skin in the front of the toenail. See how I pull it down to file? Because that is a tip for you guys. When you pull down the skin, you can see the true squareness. Some people do not pull down that skin in the front. And the, t the front of the square, it's like the corners are square, but the front is kind of bowed. Or it's kind of like a little bit rounded, and it's not a perfect square, okay? So this right here, them two, pull down that skin in the front when you file and go underneath here to make sure the tips aren't thick. Because if someone sees your toes at a certain angle, like it's going, you see this? It looked thick. We don't want it to look thick, okay? People shouldn't be in your business that close up, but we don't want that. So you can see how I, I, I take my time. I go back and forth to get the best result that I can. So I was just checking that it's dry. That's what I do. I scratch it with my thumb. I go back and forth to get the best result that I can and that's my tips and that's my own personal trick okay I don't think some people pay enough attention 
to how much time they spend but like I say it only takes about an hour 15 hour 20 to do a whole set um, if I'm doing French tip that's probably gonna add an extra five minutes but um, yeah this is a really quick service I do acrylic toes every single day at least one or two times a day um, if not more depending on who's booking for where but it all this takes practice you guys um, I don't know if this is just a satisfying process for people to watch but acrylic toes is like my most viewed videos on my channel like y'all like literally like 7,000 plus views on acrylic toe videos so I guess I need to start doing more of them um, let me know in the comments if you guys want to see a lot more um, yeah so again I like to file the sides everything you do it needs to stay within the confines of them of them now um y'all i cannot talk i'm sorry of the side walls okay so again you see get up there be careful with this i like to pull the skin down i'm probably gonna do it in a minute yeah because at a certain point i don't want to cut their their uh toe okay because the, the file no matter what is going to be sharp i don't want to cut them toe i don't want to make them bleed and then i go over top just like normal because i like to make sure everything is smooth and a little more thinned out not bulky now again going back to because we're using white be careful how much you file um because the because this is a milky white and just even white in general the more you file it the more you're breaking that color down and you can file right down to the natural nail and then you're gonna be like damn i have to go back in with more white okay because now the color is affected so really with your application make sure that the toenails are not too thick so you can avoid too much filing on top make sure they're not too bumpy okay like i said i personally go back and forth because i like to maintain the crispness but you guys already know this anytime i do something to one area if i'm filing the tip to square it out i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna do uh this filing process go under with the e-file now, I'm not over filing their nails or anything like that. You see the type of strokes that I'm using. I'm not staying in one area too long or anything like that. But to get this natural of a look, it is going to be a back and forth, okay? So see, if I'm filing like this, to get that shape, I'm going to make sure I thin the tip out. And I'm going to file until I feel like I have a shape and a length that fits the toenail, okay? And just keep in mind, most people do not want super long toenails. Their toenails will grow as they get a fill. And then from there, I'm not going to like file them all the way back down to scratch unless someone asks for that. But I always tell people, especially if they have shorter nails, look, the more you come and the more fills you get, the better your result will be. But if you, if you have toenails like this particular client does, you know, her toenails were already a, a decent length, really you're gonna have a really really great result like off tops right so I know this video is long I know I'm talking a lot but I I really just wanted to come like I said my last acrylic toes video was two months ago I didn't even realize but I wanted to come and just really give you guys some real you know tips and tricks especially because I'm using white this time and white is a tricky color um, so yeah I'm just going back and forth on these last two toenails so that way I can really make sure that I have a really really great um look i am you guys know i'm a sucker for symmetrics i like everything to look like it belongs it goes i take a lot of pride in my work so that's why i double triple check i go back and forth i just continue to make sure everything is what it needs to be you see what i'm saying hey what's up bills so um i'll be done in a couple minutes she's the greatest nail tech in the <laughs> thank you so this is why I go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And once I feel like, okay, this is giving me what it needs to give. And you know what? The way I hype myself up during this whole thing and I help my clients up like, girl, please. Yeah, I had to get a video. And you know what? I took a video of the big toe. I'm going to try and insert it. If you guys don't hear me talking, because I might insert it later. I don't know. We'll see. But there's videos... I, I put in plenty of videos in here already so it's like a, it's cool so now at this point I go to sit next to the client basically and I look and I analyze from their angle and make sure 
is this given what it needs to give is is everything straight are the lengths matching up and i make any adjustments i need to make as you will see because to me personally i need i need to see from both angles like i already know it's gonna give from my angle but i just have to double check and then of course i go ahead and spray the foot down i didn't mention this before but you guys already know i spray the foot with like sanitizing spray before i start but of course there's no fungus there's no nothing to be concerned about so this is so that way i can get rid of all the dust before i top coat because i don't want any dusties in my top coat and this is a quick before and after i thought this would be interesting to show like her toenails were not in a bad way at all but acrylic toes definitely give that pop okay they definitely do so <clears throat> Here we go, we are top coating. And when it comes to top coating toes, the best thing I can say is keep it thin. Keep it very thin because you do not want top coat dripping where it doesn't need to be. And just, you can just really see how these look like she grew them. It looked like her toenails grow this way or it just, y'all, like it's so amazing to think like this is really my job, this is really my life. Like these are the results that I provide. It's, it's, it's something else, y'all. It's really something else. Like, this whole... I'm just surprised that anybody even wants to see me do acrylic toes. Like, I know in my city, you guys know I'm in Sacramento. I'm Like, people tell me that I'm one of the only girls in Sacramento that does toes, like, in any type of capacity, let alone acrylic toes. But it's still crazy to hear that, like, people... Like, people drive a couple hours to come see me for stuff like this. Like, it's, it blows my mind. That I've been blessed in this type of way to attract people that think that my work is up to this type of, you know, standard. Like, it, it just, it brings me such joy that I can bring people this type of joy. Like, how happy they are just over their feet, you know? Like, it's really crazy. Like, I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm better or brag on anybody. But when I'm so go, go, go and busy, I don't take a minute to think about that type of stuff sometimes, you know? So, I always oil up the cuticles and the feet. So we can go ahead and get videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really do. This is the first white toes that I've done on my channel, I believe. And um, yeah, I, I really, I really did enjoy making this video. Like these, these, they couldn't have came out better, honestly. Uh, let me know what else you guys want to see. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, turn on your damn notifications so you can know when I'm uploading because I try to continue to give y'all videos on the daily, okay? Follow me on Instagram at Nails by Pretty Face. And once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm pretty gang. Y'all already know what's good. Here is a final result once again, once again, once again. Come on now. Come on. And y'all already know I'll see you in the next video.